Let's take another look at the Spider Farmer 6 inch inline fan with Smart Controller, and this time we are actually going to talk about how to set it up. Welcome to the Hippie Geeks! Let's dig into the settings of this controller so that you can get it working just the way you want. The first thing that I need to do is get it all out of the box, and they ship it in a couple of different boxes inside of a larger box to hold it all together. First up is the carbon filter, and this one is nice and compact and already has the dust filter installed on it. I love that they have added the hanging points on both sides of the filter as it makes it so much easier to hang it in a tent using the ratcheting hangers. Next up is the bag containing the 33 feet of 6 inch ducting that the kit comes with. I doubt that you are going to need more duct than that for any mounting situation inside of a tent, so you should be covered by the amount that they send. It also comes with two clamps for the duct, but honestly I wish that it came with one more so that you could clamp both sides of the fan and the carbon filter as well. Finally, there is the box that has the fan itself along with its controller. There is a baggie that contains some mounting hardware and the temperature probe, so make sure you don't lose this when you are unboxing it as you are going to need that probe. It also comes with a 5 foot power cord, but if you need a longer one, it uses the same end as most consumer electronics and computer power supplies use, so you can find longer ones really easily. Next up is the controller itself, and then underneath that is the instruction manual and the fan. The cable that connects the fan to the controller is 8 feet long, so you should have plenty of cable to be able to put the controller where it is the most convenient for you. One thing to note with this fan is that if you plug the fan itself into electricity without the controller connected, it will automatically ramp up to full speed, and that is going to be a lot of air blasting out of the fan. Alright, so here we are with the cable from the fan to the controller plugged into the OUT1 port, and then the thermal probe plugged into the sensor port. With the unit powered up, you will be sitting on the main screen of this unit, and if you look at the upper left it just says ON. In the middle you can see what the current temperature is, and in the upper right you can see what the current relative humidity is. Right below that you can see what speed the fan is currently spinning, and finally in the lower right you can see what speed we have the fan set to, which started out at 0, but then I am slowly clicking up through the speeds to 10. You can see that there is a slight delay between me upping the speed and the fan actually ramping up, and that is by design. The thing to remember about this screen is whatever fan speed you set here is what the maximum fan speed will be when you get into the temperature and humidity control screen later in the video. I will have it set at 2 for most of this footage as I don't have the fan hooked up to any duct work at the moment, so that is the highest you will usually see it go when we get to that section. Personally, I use the fan mostly in the temperature control mode about half the time, and the other half I just leave it on in this mode with the fan set to always be moving some air. It just depends on what the heat in the environment is looking like at the time and what my goals are with the grow. If you click on the button in the lower left, that will take you to the next mode, which is off. This is the mode that will allow you to change several settings inside of the controller itself. If you hold the up and down arrows at the same time, that will change the controller from freedom units to Celsius and then back again. This is also where you can change the brightness of the screen by using the up and down arrows individually. I left this at setting 3 for the video as I want to be able to see it on camera. If you hit the mode button on the lower left again, that then takes you to the timer mode, which does exactly what it sounds like. If you hit the up arrow, that will add minutes to the timer, and the fan will run for that amount of time and then shut off. I can see folks using this if they want some air movement after spraying the leaves of the plants, but to be honest, I never use this mode as I almost always want the fan to be moving some air. The next mode will bring you to the place that my fans usually stay, and that is controlling it by either temperature or humidity. You start out with the high temp setting, and if you hit the up and down arrows, you can see that it will change the target temperature that is shown in the lower right of the screen. If the current temperature is equal to or above that temperature, the fan will come on and ramp up to whatever speed you had it set to in the first screen, in my case level 2. The fan will then stay on until the temp goes under that setting, and while it is on you can see the high temp words on the left are flashing while the fan is running, and then goes solid when the fan switches off. If you hold both up and down arrows at the same time, that will turn this trigger off. That goes for all four of these settings for humidity and temperature, and you are going to want to turn off the two that don't apply to your use case. What I mean by that is the vast majority of folks are looking to keep both the temperature and humidity down, so you will most likely only need the high temp and high humidity setting. 
If you are trying to warm the tent up, however, or bring the humidity up to match the environment, then you would use the low temp and low humidity instead. For most folks though, you are going to want the fan to come on when the tent is too warm or too humid, and I will usually set my high temp trigger at 80 degrees and my high humidity level at 60%, depending on what part of the grow I am in. If you ever overshoot the mode you actually wanted to change, you don't need to go all the way back around. If you long press the mode button instead of tapping it, it will move to the previous mode instead of going to the next one. Once you make your way through those modes, you come to the alarm settings, and I just don't like this mode at all, and it feels virtually useless. What I would like it to do is trigger an audible alarm in any mode when the temperature or humidity level I set is reached, but that isn't what it does. Let's say that I set my high temp alarm to 90 degrees. With this controller, you set it to the 90 degree mark, and then you have to hit the mode button again to get it to the on mode. Now what will happen is that the fan will stay off until the temperature that we set is hit, in this case 90 degrees, at which point the alarm will sound and the fan will ramp all the way up to max speed until the temperature gets below 90 degrees again, at which point the fan turns back off. If that sounds like something that would actually be useful for you, then it is there. But as I mentioned before, I mostly either leave the fan on all the time at a slower setting or have it set to come on when the temperature or humidity get too high. If you ever have any questions about the settings, make sure to check out the manual that comes with it as it is actually a decent one. Don't worry if you have lost it or thrown it away though, as you can just go to their website and see the manual there as well. A big thank you to Spider Farmer for sending over this 6 inch exhaust fan for us to take a look at. If you want to check out their gear for yourself, make sure to click on the links to their website in the video description down below and use the discount code GEEKS at checkout to get 8% off your entire order.